Hello, everyone. Welcome back to yet another episode of More Sewing with Michelle. This week, I've got this really cool new tool to show you called the Blade Saver. So what this tool is going to do is take your old, worn out, 45 millimeter rotary cutter blades and give them new life. I can't wait to show you. And in addition, see this crazy quilt in back of me? I'm going to be showing you how to create it, my techniques to do crazy quilting. We've got a lot to do, so let's get going on this week's More Sewing with Michelle. So let's talk about this interesting new tool, the Blade Saver. First off, you're looking at it going, kind of looks like a hockey puck. How is that going to help me? But what this does is it opens up. There's a thumb opening there. And it's got magnets, which is really cool because that helps to keep it together. So you can see that the magnets pop it right together, which is perfect. And I'll tell you why. Now, it comes with this thing. It looks like... um. I don't know, maybe a plumeria flower, a hibiscus, or a snowflake. And basically, you're going to want to use a flathead screwdriver. You could use a Phillips. I say um, use your flathead that is with your sewing machine, and that way you already know where one is. And you're going to unscrew this screw here. And I like to always use my finger. Be careful not to lose anything. And then you turn it over, and that exposes the other area. So right now with the blade saver, what it comes with is one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. You don't want to lose any of them, but this is what it's great for. So I have always kept my old 45 degree or not degree, 45 um, millimeter blade savers or my other blade savers in a container and then I discard them at one time. And let me talk real quickly about that. I do the same thing with my needles and my pins that are used. Um, I would hate for someone that's sifting through our my trash because we know that they go through stuff now to recycle to get poked by a used um, or cut by a blade. So I always discard them in a container. I actually has a friend who um, um, is a nurse, so I can give them to them and they can put them in those special things so that no one gets cut, hurt, poked, whatever. So I recommend um, that you do that. On my pins and needles that um, get bent or are used, I use an old gum container and I stick them in there. And when it gets full, I, you know, give it away um, to be um, disposed of properly. But my old blades, I do the same thing. I keep one of the containers and I've got a few of them in here. Now, these are always problematic because they are so sharp. And I know I've cut myself a few times, but... So you need to be careful when holding your blades. So basically what you're going to do then is you're going to put your used blade that's now going to have so much more life and it's not going to go to the landfill to be recycled or wherever right now. You're going to put the snowflake or the flower back together, add your screw on top. Okay, so you're going to take your screw and simply screw it in. Make sure that it's aligned perfectly. There we go. And now you have this really interesting thing with your blade in there. Now this is where the beauty comes in. So it's got one, two, three, four, five areas where you can cut threads and stuff. So it's perfect for chain piecing. I think this was so inventive. Now this um, blade saver was made by a company called Purple LLC and it is a family owned small business in um, United States, actually right here in California. So, um, and they make them on 3D printers. So that's amazing. And it's so exciting to take something that we were gonna throw away and we were done with because it wasn't sharp enough to cut fabric. But I tell you, these blades are sure sharp enough to cut some threads. So you then take this, put the base back together, and it's got this notch on this side. Add it in and look, you've got areas where you can cut. I love it. Um, and so then even when you get that done, you can rotate it to the other areas. So this is gonna extend 
the life of your used um, rotary cutter blades um, by months, years, who knows? I mean, you're going to take that blade and you're going to continue to use it for time to come. So before I show you actually how to chain piece, if you haven't done that, let me show you once you have it in there, once you have that blade secured in there and the shape for the flower or the snowflake is obviously there to protect you so you do not cut yourself with the blade. But here's another great thing. Remember I said that it's got the two sides and it's got the magnet. So then you can put this back into the container and it does line up in a certain way. Put, whoops, put the lid back on and look, nothing is exposed. You can travel with it. Stick it in your um, sewing bag, um, wherever you want. It's completely now encased and back looking like a hockey puck. I really can't say um, any anything bad about this tool. I think it's great. I think it's inventive. And I think you need one. The Blade Saver. And once again, to open it, it's got that finger area. Simply pull it out. Put this back together. And you're ready to go. The Blade Saver. So let me show you real quick, if you're not familiar with chain piecing, what I mean. So I've got my machine set up. I've got some little um, two and a half inch squares ready to go. And I'm simply, instead of cutting and realigning, I simply lift this foot up and then continue to sew. And I'll do that again, add that in. And we've got one more to show you. Let me go a little bit further on this one. Lift it up again. And there you have it. This is called chain piecing. So I've got all these little two and a half inch blocks that are now sewn together like so. But you have this little area where you have threads in between. And let me tell you, that's where this blade saver is key. Now, I forgot to show you before, um, if you put this on the table, it's got these rubber little grips on the bottom, and that way, it's not going anywhere. So I'm going to put this up here, take this, go through the blade, and just like that, oh my gosh, now can you see the beauty of this? If it wasn't just to pretend, um, to extend, excuse me, to extend the life of your blade, but now it makes it an easy tool that you're going to utilize to chain piece and cut things. You can cut regular threads with it. You can really cut a lot of different things, but I love this. It's good, not only in the sewing machine. Think about it. If you needed different things cut around your house, it's a wonderful tool to have in multiple places. So I know you're going to want to pick up this blade saver. Um, the mom and her two boys that invented it and got the patent, they did a great job and so useful. And I know you're going to want to pick one up. So in order to do that, you can go to mores-so.com or click on the link in the description where you can get your amazing blade saver today. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about crazy quilting. Now, crazy quilting is something I've been doing for a long time. I love the art form. I think it's so freeing and um, there's no rules, which, oh, that's huge for me. Um, you can kind of just do whatever you want. You can use whatever types of fabrics you like. So I often will use leftover clothing, jeans, um, leftover materials from clothing or from projects. Leftover quilt blocks are a huge thing in mine. I use them all the time. But I've added ribbon. I've added embroidery. So there really is no right or wrong. It's completely up to you. And that's why I love making um, crazy quilt items. Now, I have often, I will have some of them ready to go. So I'm going to show you this one real quick. This is a close-up. Uh, let me get it lined up. There you go of some crazy quilting that I've done. You can see that I've used leftover fabrics and I also have just fun stitches. And that's another great thing about it is on um, securing all those different things. And it's not securing 
um, because it's going to fall apart. It's actually part of the beauty of crazy quilting is um, adding stitches. Now you can add them with um, hand embroidery. I like using my mach sewing machine because it goes so much faster. But you can see I've used some of the decorative stitches. Um, look at that one. It says stitch, stitch, stitch right across there. So it's so much fun. And literally, um, I will have them hanging out ready to go. And that way, if I want to make a bag, we're good. Now, let me show you some of the bags I've made. So this is one bag I've made. And you can see I've added, whoops, let me get my finger correct, um, some flowers with applique on top of everything. And on this one, um, it's obviously got handle. I've used fun fabrics on the inside. So they just are a lot of fun to create. And I tell you, I get so many compliments when I have them. This is another bag. This is just a basic tote bag that you can see. Um, but I also did free motion. Let me see if I can get it in camera here where you can see I did free motion and added my name. So like I said, no right or wrong. I like on mine to use a mix of free motion stitching, straight line stitching, um, just anything you can see in the center part here. Um, I just used a variety of things. And to me, the more crazy it is, the more different type of stitching, the beauty it is for the overall finished product. Now, let me talk a little bit about the history of crazy quilting and when it started. Now, in 1876, it is believed that's when it kind of started off and the, the juices from these women that went to the World's Fair in Philadelphia, they saw um, some of the um, stitching and textile art from Japan and England and it really got our juices flowing here in America and it is believed that that's kind of where it took off. So by 1880 though it was all the rage. Crazy quilting was everywhere and like I said they used fabrics, they used clothing, they used other textile type things, they did a lot of hand sewing, they added beads, patches, you know, there was nothing off limits for these women. And typically, they only did the top piece. So they weren't making like a quilt sandwich like we do now. They were making it as a throw or a decorative thing for the wall. So it became uh, very much in fashion in urban and upper class women to make these crazy quilts. Um, and like I said, they used anything they could get their hands on and some of them that you'll see in uh, museums, they're just amazing. And I myself, I've added beads and other fun things to them. So get crazy yourself, add some weird off the wall things. It's just gonna make it beauty um, to, to be shown for many, many years to come. So that's the history and the basics behind Crazy Quilting. Now let me show you how I actually produce it. So I'm gonna dive in, show you a little bit into my world as far as I do crazy quilting. You can see I kind of got everything fi fixed up. I've got my ironing board, my little mat. I've got decorative stitches. Um, I have a quilt sandwich. So we're going to do this as quilt as you go. So I have backing. You can see that I, there's no rules here. So I use two pieces of fabric and then I even piece together my batting. It's not going to matter. Um, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to tell. So I like using my scraps, piece those together also for this type of thing. So I've got this ready to go. And then I have on my machine, I have my walking foot set up and straight stitch. I have it at 1.8. And then I've got kind of a variety of things. This is my bag of um, strip scraps. So they're usually about two and a half inches which is what I use a lot. Leftover binding or leftover pieces I put in this bag so they're ready to go. And then I've got, um, this is some quilt blocks that you can see I have in here that I can add in at any point. Um, I've got some fun fabrics. I've got pieced elements. I've got some embroidery things. I've got lots of different things to use. And keep in mind, I also like to use flannel. So um, very textile, so you can have something smooth and soft like polyester to a flannel 
to a duck. It doesn't matter the type of fabrics. It's just so much fun when you put them all together. So what I like to do is start with something and I'm going to, you can see this is left over from my clamshell quilt, uh, just a fun fabric. And I've got a little bit of um, organza and I'm going to just find a spot. There's no right or wrong. And I like to have my organza to where it's kind of wrinkled. And I'm just simply going to put a stitch down to kind of secure it. And I'm adding those wrinkles as I go. And this is just the starting point for me. And one more little stitch there. And I'll bring that all the way down. So now I've got just this fun little thing that looks like, whoops, like so. And now I'm going to secure that other end. And being that it's quilt as you go, you can add bits and pieces wherever you want. Let me add, um, my dad is a huge USC fan, so I just made him a little bag. So I'm gonna add this USC fabric to kind of secure that. And like I said, the crazier the fabrics, the better the overall feel is gonna be. And I'm just completely sewing over what I just stitched. I'm gonna go all the way to the end on this. Once again, cut. And then here what I do, once I have that part done, then I'm going to put it down on my ironing board and I'm gonna iron it flat open, like so. And I'm trying to stay away from that organza. So now what I wanna do is secure one of those other areas. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick up this leftover um, embroidery that I've had laying around. I'm simply going to cut it so that it's closer. And I'm gonna trim up this part too. And you can see, I am not trying to really cut super straight. I'm just trying to secure that. So I'm going to add that across at an angle and let me sew it and I'll show you what it looks like. And cut, bring it over, iron that open. Oh my gosh, I'm already getting excited. So you can see where I'm at now. Let me bring it over. And then I just continue to go from here. So I'm gonna sew a bunch more pieces in and then I'll be right back. So <laughs> I've been busy. So I went ahead and I kind of finished it all up, except I've got one spot and I wanna show you one more trick that I do. So right here, I've got some of that batting showing. We don't want that. We want all the batting completely covered. So what I'm going to do is recognize this. <laughs> this is from a past episode of More Sewing with Michelle too. But anyways, it has the double-sided adhesive on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And I'm going to iron that on to my quilt here and hide the hole. Give me a second and then I'll show you. And then problem solved. So I've used um, lots of leftover quilt blocks and there you have it. So, and that'll be so much fun to quilt. Let me cut the excess off. So now this one's completely done. What needs to happen next is the fun decorative stitches. Now, when I do decorative stitches, I love to dive into all those fun stitches in my machine. Let me get um, a table runner and I'll show you what I mean. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the stitching and the fun, fun, fun thing about crazy quilting is the finishing. You're doing um, quilts as you go. So this is the table runner that I worked on before. So you can see on the back, I've got this fun fabric. And then look at this. I've got all this fun stuff that I did. You can see I used that gnomes um, from Gnomin It Up. I've used some um, organza and just, you know, a bunch of quilt blocks. I added a little 
um, flower center with applique. And I've already started on this one to do some of the decorative stitches. I'm going to bring it up close. You can see that I did um, free motion here where it says love. And then just some of the fun elements that I've done on there. So it's just a lot of fun. And I tell you, one of the fun, fun things to do is to dive into those stitches you hardly ever use. So I, I have a philosophy. I think that most people, when you get your sewing machine, especially if, you know, in the modern, wonderful, brand new sewing machines where we've got hundreds of stitches to choose from, um, but you kind of gravitate to maybe 20, sometimes 10. It all depends upon your machine. I know I do, and every machine, it doesn't matter how many stitches it offers, I always kind of go back to those ones that I'm really loyal to. But with Crazy Quilting, I love to dive into, go to those stitches that are so ignored and use them. So what I like to do is I will hit on my machine, I'll go to these where I'll go to the satin stitch and look at those fun things. Now satin stitches with a variegated thread on a Crazy Quilt, ah, it is just the best. Um, and then you can also, I'm going to go back to this um, area, and I'm going to go to Heirloom. And every machine's different, but you can see there's all these stitches in here that um, you may not utilize and you may not have even looked at before. This is the time to use them on this crazy quilting. So you can see here, I've got one of those right there and another one here. Look at that. Remember what I said? Um, a satin stitch with a variegated thread. So much fun. This is, I call this like the baseball stitch that goes on a baseball. Um, it's just a lot of fun. And I use, I alter the stitch width and length to make them look completely different. This is one of my favorites to do. And I only found that from doing crazy quilting. Let me hold it up close so you can see. Isn't that a cool stitch? And um, like I said, I don't know where I would have used it any other place. And then um, don't forget to do your free motion. I've got that there as well. So it really is just completely up to you. You can just do one all over straight line quilting. You can do um, one colored thread. But what I love to do is dig in, get some of my threads that I don't use or one of the other great things is grab some threads that are almost gone, use them up, and the more variety, variety or variety, whatever, <laughs> potato, potato, um, you use as far as the threads are really going to accent it as well. So no holds bars. There's no real big rules when you do crazy quilting. Pull out those scraps pull out a cool variety of thread colors, use those stitches on your machine that you ignore and make a crazy quilt, um, a table runner, a bag, it's completely up to you. But I hope you've gotten something out of my crazy quilting little demo here. So that's it for this week's More Sewing with Michelle. I hope you take the time, pick up your blade saver, and utilize those used, worn out rotary cutter blades for weeks and months to come with this handy dandy tool. And don't forget to try some crazy quilting. Um, you can see on the one in back of me, um, I've got um, leftover embroidery, I've got a quilt block. There's just so many things you can do with crazy quilting. It's relaxing and it's fun, and I hope you take some time out of your busy day and try out some crazy quilting. Until next week, have a fabulous time. Be safe out there, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.